Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. So I'm going to show how to make routing doorways in a dream. Right, so say we wanted to have like a hub world or whatever that goes to 50 different scenes from one from one uh, hub world scene. First, let's make some kind of buttons that the player can click on with their imp to go to different places. And when you hover over it, so we're going to detect if you're hovering over it using a grab sensor and while it's hovered we'll do something we'll have it glow like that so we'll wire that into there and when we hover over it then we are um, lighting up that cube if we grab it we want to do we want to exit towards that scene so let's go uh, so we just need a doorway and when we grab it we we'll go through that doorway so we'll say to number one the other thing you need to do though is tweak the sculpture and go into the physics properties tab and make it grabbable and now when we grab it it will do the thing so it says you triggered a doorway um, so let's just have three of these So now we can grab any of these and they go to a different doorway sort of thing and That'll be it for our amazing hub world thing So let's save that as a scene and we'll give that the name hub Now we want some scenes that represent those three scenes that we go to so we'll just have a Big old number displayer. That'll do. So that will be scene one. And I'll make scene two and scene three. So now if I make a dream, I'll bring in the hub and those scenes. And to one is going to go to the scene one. To two is going to go to scene two. To three is going to go to scene three. Uh, so that, let's just make sure that part works. So we play that, and if we click on two, then we go to scene two. That's good enough for me. So if I look at the thermo down here, it says 16%, even though we have very few gadgets. This is because if you if you click on gameplay and then click on more details you see that actually there are many different limits and it just puts a star and uses the number for the one that's closest to reaching the limit so there's just a simple limit of 20 doorways per scene we've used three so that's 15 percent of the doorways uh, so that's why it shows 15 percent so you can actually have 20 doorways in your scene and still have tons of gameplay memory left for things and connectors and whatever else you have but there is that 20 doorway limit so if we pretend that we have 20 more of these all um, hooked up properly we actually want to have 21 because we just like that we just want to push the boundaries so how do we get more than 20 destinations out of a scene that can only have 20 doorways uh, exiting out of it and we can do that by having a router scene so what I'll do is I'll just uh, have this one this is number 21 honest and we'll just pretend that this is actually required so we can't just use a simple doorway we'll have to do use our cunning the way we're going to do it is by having a router scene which means we'll have a scene that's just empty and all it's going to do is forward us off to another scene so we'll have like one router scene for one two and three and another router scene for uh, 21 22 and 23 for example but then we need to tell that router scene so so that means we can have 20 doorways in one router but then 20 doorways in here as well so we can say send them off to the first router and from the first router send them off to the second scene of that router 
So then we can kind of say, go to scene number two by going to the first router and then the second one from that router. Or go to scene 21 by going to the second router and going to the first one of the second router. But how are we going to tell that router where we actually want to end up? The only way of communicating between scenes is by variables. So let's grab a variable. And we want to set it to persist in dream, which means this variable value will stick around when we leave a scene or when we go to a different, uh, when we exit the dream entirely. So this will be, so we've called this router forward, which means when we get to the router, where do you want to forward to? From here, we want to forward to uh, room number one. So we'll, we'll keep this central. So we've got the central chip and we'll keep the variable in there because we don't want to have lots of this variable everywhere. We want to have modifiers to that variable. So if we go here and go variable modifier, then we can set the variable name and that was router forward. So I'll use up and down to go through the variable names in the scene. So router forward. And when it gets powered on, we're going to set this to one. Actually, we're going to, to first do it for, let's say this one. So we want this to set three. Well, uh, yeah, we'll just set three in here. So when we grab the cube, then we will set that variable to three and then we'll send you off to the router. So this is router. So this is numbers one to three, for example. And we'll set that value to trying to get to room number three. So we want a scene that has a chip in it. And we'll just make this scene uh, black. And then we'll have our logic to actually read that variable in here. So we'll have a the same variable and set it to persist in dream as well so that we're actually using the persistent variable. And then we'll call this the same thing, router forward. And then this current value will be the value that we um, set in the previous scene, which will be three. So if we just, for now, I'll just uh, print out the value of uh, what we were sent. We actually need a, a doorway here so we can hook it up. Um, so we grab a doorway. This needs to be an entrance so that we can come into the scene. We'll save that out as a scene. And this will be router for one to three. So let's put that in the dream. Get the router. So now these scenes will all be coming from the router. Uh, for now though, we'll just put them over there. Remember to update the scenes as well. So click on update. I'm also going to turn on auto update for these scenes so that when we go in and just edit this uh, dream, uh, going into this map, it will check and update anything that he's updating. And now we have that extra uh, to one to three. So we can put that into the one to three router. So now we can just test that. So let's reset that and play. So let's grab onto three. There's the router and it's trying to route to three. I'll set up the other ones to use the same thing. So I'll actually have this doorway outside here because you can only have 20 doorway gadgets in the scene. So they'll all power this one gadget but have different modifiers. So when we grab this one, it should activate to one to three and also set it to one. Um, and this one will set it to two, that one will set it to three. So let's test that. So if we edit now, it'll automatically update and then we can exit. So if we grab one, then it's got the signal that we should go to one and reset. If we grab two, that got the signal we should go to two. So that part's working. Uh, next, we want to send based on that number to a different scene from the router. So for demonstration purposes, we'll say that this only routes to maximum of 10 places. 
So we'll just get a selector which has a maximum of 10 um, slots in it and you can just wire that directly into the active port. So the way this works is if you send in one for example because we, we clicked on doorway one from the hub world it will set it to B as the output. If you if it's a two then it will set it to C as the output. Um, it will waste A but you can like subtract one if you want to but this is just a quick test. So right now B will we want B to send them off to the first door out of this router, C to send them off to the second door and so on. So we actually only have four outputs we want. And then we have doorways and these should just be uh, exits as normal. This one will go to one and they'll be powered by these different ones. Let's move them around. So if I just demonstrate the general principle, yeah, so if that's wired into active port. So if we if we got a one because we want to go to scene one, we can demonstrate what that does. This will send a one into active port and it'll be powering B, which will be sending them to the right doorway. And then two will be powering this doorway and three will be powering this doorway. So that's what we're getting from this um, variable, just powering the right doorway basically. And we can expand this out to 20 and we'll get to that later. So now we edit the dream, it updates the router. Now this is going to one, so we'll wire that up to one, to two, and to three. So when we go through that doorway, we'll go to the router and that will send us to the right ones over here. Let's play. So let's try clicking on two. It loads two and sends us to scene two. And if we reset, let's go to one. So it detects scene one and then sends us to scene one. So that's working fine. Um, one problem is though, if we if we try that again, I'll just go to scene three. So that's fine. Uh, if we now, for any reason, go back to one of these routers, any of these routers, because they all use the same variable, um, it will remember where we were trying to go to before. So um, if we just click on that one and play it, it still thinks we're trying to go to three. So ideally we want to reset that for next time so we don't get all confused. Uh, first we're going to put all these doorways onto a chip. So it works the same, they just happen to be in a chip. But then we want to put them into a timeline. Ooh. Let's put them in this timeline. So that a second in, um, it's going to... The, all the timeline does is power a, ch uh, power a gadget that's in here at the right time. And then when the play has passed, it stops powering it. So we just... This just means it's going to wait until one second and then power the doorways, whichever doorway is actually meant to work. So if I just set up something to demonstrate what's going on. So I'll have our variable slider again. So say this is sending a one because you want to go through door one. So it's going to set it to B. Um, if you play time now, it's going to try and use that doorway once it gets to the right time. But before that, we want to reset this value without messing up this. For the actual variable, we want to just set it to zero. Um, so we'll use a keyframe to just set this to zero and see if we can get that working. Put that in there, so that's a zero. And we will set it to keep changes. So when it gets to that point, it'll, it'll be one. We'll just spread these out some more. It'll be one until it gets to there, then it'll be zero and then it'll activate the doorways later. A zero, but then when we activate the doorways, none of these are, are um, it's now go gone to A, which isn't what we want. We want it to stay on the right one. So there's a cool uh, shortcut to kind of locking in that value, um, as long as the new value is going to be zero, which is, is in this case. So if we tweak the selector, we can wire the active port into itself looping the wire, which means when this goes to zero, it's going to keep whatever was there before. 
So if we play now, like that, and then the do right doorway triggers. So, uh, we, but we aren't using a value slider and we aren't using a keyframe. We're actually going to set this variable to zero. So if we go here into a variable modifier, that's just another gadget that can sit on a timeline. And we can use up and down with, on the D-pad to get that name. And we want to set it to zero when it gets powered because that'll happen when it gets powered in here. So if we give a little gap so that it actually sets it and wire that back in there. For testing, I'll just set this to some value. I'll set it to two. So this is going to start at two. And then when we get to here, it's going to set it to zero, but this is going to keep the value. Then it's going to trigger this microchip and the doorways. So it's going to be on two. Then it's going to be so if we watch this, it's on two and then it gets set to zero and then the, the right doorway is triggered. So we actually want this to happen as fast as possible so the player can carry on playing. So I'll move this along. Now if we make this smaller, I'm going to use L1 and right on the timeline. And now we can, that just kind of zooms in. So a second takes more of the screen. It also means if you zoom in enough, you can see individual logic frames over here. So then we can drag the end with R2 and just say this only takes one logic frame and this microchip can only take one logic frame and that will be fine. And we need a little gap at the front to make sure this gets set correctly. So we'll leave a little gap. Then we'll reset the variable and then we'll um, activate the doorway. So let's try playing there. So it triggered the doorway. Um, so we'll have to actually test properly to see if that, that works as desired. Um, but we're kind of uh, timing the logic there. And now let's play. So let's see if two works. Yep, sends us off to two. Um, and now if we go to the map and go to the router again and play from there, it should just say zero and not actually send us anywhere which is what it does. And we could even have like a message saying, please reset the, or go back to the dream cover and play from there or, or something. I don't know. You could have it do whatever you want. That's fine for up to nine doorways because the selector can have up to nine slots apart from a, which will be our zero. Um, but if we wanted to be able to have more than that, we can do that as well. If we use another timeline, we can actually use this to get, get um, activate discrete pieces of logic depending on what number we have, which is basically what the selector does anyway. So how does it do that? Well, if you get a value slider and wire it into the playhead, then if you send it a percentage between zero and one, it actually sets it to that percentage of the overall timeline. So if you send it a one, then it will be on the right edge, zero on the left edge and something in the middle like that. So if we condense these numbers from, which will range from one to 20 into numbers from zero to one, then this timeline will snap to whatever position we want. And if we click on clock time with X, it goes into beats mode. And then you have these uh, columns, which you can snap uh, gadgets to. And you can just go a step further by tweaking the timeline and setting the numerator to one. And now you have these numbered columns. So you know what's coming in and you can check to make sure it's going to the right column. So let's, uh, let's have a value slider that goes from, goes from one to 20. And that'll be our maximum number of um, outputs this, this um, scene can have number of doorways. And then we want to turn it from one to 20 into zero to one. So you can use a signal manipulator, wire that in and go to custom remapper mode, which has this graph. So the input range will be uh, shrunk down or stretched out into the output range. So our input range is actually one to 20 and you can use up and down to increment the values pretty quickly as well to get exact numbers. 
and then it will go from if we zoom in there it goes from 0 to 1 so that's what we want so we plug that in there then 1 will be sending out a 0 20 will be sending out a 1 so we have these columns then we can set it to have 20 columns like that you want this to have an input from 1 to 21 which means when you're at 20 it's actually sending a number um, near the top but this means that we can put a gadget on here and see and make sure it's working and stuff and we've uh, sorted that out without it having to hang off the end necessarily so we can actually wire that directly into the playhead now and delete that value slider and different values that we could have being passed in as which as to wh where to send the player next will go to that column so we've got an 8 and that goes to column 8 so in our chip with the doorways we actually only have three but the principle works the same so if we put these into one and two we can put the make these just last those columns and three like that and then we don't need that um, so now when we get sent a one that's only going to power that doorway out to scene one and when this is sent a two we're only going to power the second doorway uh, but, but again we only want that to happen after it's reset over here so in this case because we're using a signal manipulator all we need to do now is to have that powered off while we're not um well we don't actually want to send the player out and then we use a keyframe to power it on so then it will power the timeline and the whichever doorway gadget is got to so if we set that to a two that's going to trigger the doorway just as normal something to bear in mind with this though is that if it's zero then it'll actually still trigger this doorway so let's make that go down to zero you can just drag the left edge like that and now we have a zero position over here and adjust this to be able to go to zero as well so from zero to 21 so when the uh, when the variable is on zero it will go to this point in the timeline and not do anything and that's where you can put your warning logic or whatever so we want to store that value again just as before but we need a little bit more time to do it we need a frame for it for the signal manipulator to receive the value and send the correct value then we want to freeze it then we want to activate the timeline so if we do that i'll just expand it more so the first frame is the signal manipulator kind of warming up then we'll have this turn on freeze which means the output is frozen from this signal manipulator and we'll have that be keep changes we'll just move it up a bit and then we'll reset the value slider in this case or the variable we can actually um, activate the timeline at the same time because this is already frozen so let's see if that activates a doorway so that should activate two and we triggered a doorway nice so let's just wire that into there and remove that make sure that still works and then we can go and make sure by actually play testing it in the dream reset and then play so i want to go to number three and get set to turn number three so it works and we reset go to number one and it sends us off to number one so that works as before but the difference is we can have as many doorways as we're allowed we're allowed up to 20 and that will still all work fine so that that means you can have 20 routers from the hub and each of those have 20 out um, final destinations so that's i think that's 400 uh, scenes you could have linked to from one hub thanks for watching I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.